following program does not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its staff, or Pure Channel Media and Entertainment. Live from downtown Honolulu, it's The Moving Body with your host, Dr. Bernie Portner of Portner Orthopedics, recognized as Hawaii's leading sports medicine and orthopedic specialist. And now, here's your host, Dr. Bernie Portner. Good morning, Hawaii, and welcome to The Moving Body. Welcome back if you were listening to the earlier tape show. Today is uh, the 11th of October, 2014, and the lines are open now, maybe not later. So if you have a question for me, now's the time to call 521-8383, and we'll uh, try uh, our best to answer your question. Um, just rushed in from uh, Manoa to get over here and uh, got here just in time. Um uh, I heard a little bit about this show, uh, the previously uh, packed show coming in. Uh, let's see, there seems to be a call coming in and no one to answer it. Let me take this myself. Hello, it's Dr. Portner and you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Good morning. Hmm, doesn't seem to work. Uh, you can try again. I guess I don't have an engineer here this morning for some reason. But... Uh, Anyway, um, I talked to my brother on the way in. He's in Detroit, and he listens to the show on iHeartRadio, so the show can be heard. Um, the show can be heard uh, all over the world, I guess, but on the mainland is where there's – I know there's listeners in Detroit, New York, Chicago, on the West Coast, because I hear from them, and occasionally they'll actually – Arizona, and they'll occasionally call in. Um, I'm, uh, for those of you who've been following this story, by the way, this is not orthopedics, but I did get my car back yesterday. It's not completely fixed, but, uh, just to fill you in, my car was stolen three weeks ago. Exactly. Tomorrow will be three weeks. They, uh, well, no, actually, uh, about three and a half weeks. And they finally found the car and, uh, uh, the needed work, and I just picked it up. It's not all fixed, but at least it's drivable. I'm going to try to take this call as well. I'm missing my car, uh, caller answer. Maybe this will work. Let's see. Hello, it's Dr. Portner. You're on the air. Do you hear me? Hello? I guess not. Let me just check something here. Hello, are you there? No. I'm having some technical difficulties, so bear with me. Um, uh, I'll just uh, palaver here a little bit. Uh, anyway, um, so I do have my car back, and I'm sort of happy about it. It's still missing a window, and it's still missing some stuff. and needs some body work and so on. Let me try this one. Here's another caller coming in. Hello, you hear me now? It's Dr. Portner. No, not working. I don't know. Somebody help me out here. Um, where was I? Oh, another. So I have my car for what it's worth, which isn't much. Um, it's a uh, 2006 uh, Scion. Uh, let's see here. Um, I wanted to talk today about a very interesting patient, not just one patient, but one in mind comes one one comes to mind in particular. But uh, generally speaking, I wanted to talk about the SI joint. SI stands for uh, sacral iliac joint. SI joint, and uh, the SI joint is in the uh, back, towards the, sort of the buttock, towards the midline. It connects the sacrum, which is the end of the spine, and connects it with the uh, ilium, which is that pelvic bone. Like if you put your hands on your hip, so to speak, that uh, bone that you're putting your hand on um, just at the bottom of your waist is um, the ilium. And those two bones come together, the sacrum and the ilium come together in a long joint, about maybe four four or five inches long, uh, called the sacroiliac joint. And the sacroiliac joint is a joint. It, it's like any other joint in a way. 
It has a lining called the synovium that can get inflamed. And um, it has ligaments that hold the two bones together tightly, called the, of, of all things, sacroiliac joint. It causes buttock pain. It can cause pain referring down into the back of the thigh as well, um, and across the uh, side of the hip, too. And um, it hurts with sitting, especially sitting on the affected side. So people, when I walk into a room and if people are sitting on the chair leaning to one side, it's a big clue for me that the other side that they're not putting weight on when they sit may have a sacroiliac joint problem. So I walk in and I sometimes already know the diagnosis before a single word is said. And um, it can hurt when you walk as well because with each step you put weight up through the floor, through your heel, up your leg, through the knee, up the thigh, through the hip, into the pelvis, and uh, through the SI joint. And so each step can be painful as well. And uh, this is uh, not as uncommon as it uh, seems. It's often missed. And I have a very interesting case to discuss, but I'm going to try this phone business. It keeps blinking, and I can't get to it. Let me try again. Uh, let's see. What happens if I get rid of these? I don't know. Uh, hello, it's Dr. Portner. You're on the air. Thanks for calling. Can you hear me? It's not. Uh, that's not it. That's not it. I'm pushing every button I can see because I have no idea how this machine works. There we go. Uh, I sure wish I had a helper here. Anyway, so the SI joint causes buttock pain or what commonly uh, patients come in and say, my back hurts because it's right the lower part of the spine off to one side. And it's rarely diagnosed properly by ordinary family doctors, PCPs, general doctors, internists. And uh, even, I'm sorry to say, some specialists miss out and miss the diagnosis. And people are falsely diagnosed as having either a lumbar strain, a pulled muscle in their back, or a lumbar spinal problem like a disc or a stenosis, which it mimics. Both of those things, there's overlap in the story. And uh, the best way to make the diagnosis after a good physical exam, which often leads one to being very suspicious of the SI joint, your, your suspicion can be confirmed with an injection into the SI joint. So, um, uh, that's done usually under x-ray control called fluoroscopy. And why I say all this is because uh, lately I've seen several patients uh, come in uh, with this diagnosis that was missed, that was misdiagnosed uh, by various doctors, uh, you know, well-intentioned, fairly well-trained doctors who were either out of their league or uh, were orthopedists that just didn't know to look for the SI joint and were injecting and ca ca uh, ordering all kinds of tests like MRIs of the lumbar spine and physical therapists treating the lumbar spine where uh, this is not going to get better if you treat the spine. The SI joint is not going to improve. And uh, the very gratifying thing of all this is that uh, if you make the right diagnosis, uh, and you're, and you decide to try the injection and your aim is true, then, let me try again. Um, I just, uh, let's see if, uh, uh, someone can call me and test the equipment. I think I may have just solved the problem. So if you uh, suspect the SI joint, and your aim is true, and you fill it up with Novocaine and maybe a little bit of cortisone, um, then uh, you will get rid of the pain, at least temporarily. When the, uh, when the Novocaine goes into the joint, it numbs it up, the pain goes away, and you know you're in the right place. And then uh, uh, you can uh, treat that. Let me see. I'm going to try again. 
Hello, it's Dr. Portner. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Oh. It uh, works. <laughs> I'm checking uh, to see if your yeah. thing it, is working. Yeah, I needed to. I, I, I'm not that great at engineering this machine, but thanks for for working. It, 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 it works now. I just needed to push a button. Oh, this is Harry. Oh, You're Harry, probably. yeah, good. My uh, longtime listener and... Um, uh, fa- loyal, loyal uh, listener, and uh, also the guy with the calendar. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Harry. Thanks for for, for doing that. Oh, okay. Appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Let's see. Now I have another caller. Go ahead. You're on the air. It's Doctor Portner. Hello. Oopsies. You, I'm not hearing. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Hello. Are you there? Hello. I, I gotta believe it's the other guy's equipment now. Very frustrating show, and where's my help? I pay a lot of money for this time. Are you there? Hello? Huh. This is not. And the drop's not working. Oh well. It's gonna be one of those days, guys. I'll just have to do a monologue until this all works. Um, so um, I was talking about the SI joint. So it's not exactly an obscure diagnosis, but it's often missed, which is a pity. So here comes the case that brought all this up. Um, there we go. Uh I had a patient came to me with over a year of pain in her, what she called her back. It was actually the buttock. And uh, it was worse when she sat and she was a sitter. Uh, in other words, she when she worked, she worked in an office. And she had to often get up and squirm. If she went to a movie, she'd have to move from one side to the other um, and, and get up and wasn't comfortable. And she ended up not wanting to go to movies and would look at how long the movie was because if it was a two-hour movie, she wouldn't even consider it. But if it was like an hour and a half or or 80 minutes, she would uh, give it a try. Uh, she had been to her doctor uh, to no avail. She had been to a physical therapist who did exercises um, to no avail. Um I don't remember uh, if she went to an orthopedist or a rheumatologist, but she went to some specialist as well who also didn't make the proper diagnosis. It was it, it was difficult, so I don't want to uh, knock these guys because she had a sitting hurt her, which is typical of a disc, and she had an MRI that showed a disc problem in the lower lumbar spine. So everybody sort of jumped on the bandwagon and... Um, concluded that, oh, yeah, she hurts when she sits. The MRI shows a disc. It must be a disc. And uh, she even went and got an epidural injection, which is a great treatment for a, for back pain if you have um, a disc problem. It doesn't work at all if you have a SI joint problem. And, of course, in her case, it didn't work. And she was just beside herself and miserable And if I remember correctly, she came to me because she was listening to this show. (laughs) And she heard, she, she heard, she heard me talking on the show, not about SI joints, but she says, I'm going to try this guy. And, uh, I looked at her, examined her, read her records, looked at her MRI, talked to her about what makes it worse, what makes it better. And I was very suspicious of, um, the SI joint based on her presentation, her exam, and her history. So um, I asked my therapist, first of all, because I don't like to give a shot right off the bat. I asked my therapist, uh, first of all, to try to mobilize, to work on the SI joint to see if they can help. And they did, and it did help, as I recall, somewhat, but not enough. She still didn't go to movies. She still wasn't comfortable at work, although she wasn't missing work. And uh, she was uh, taking pain pills. I forgot to mention that. She continued to take pain pills. So we took her in to the procedure room where we have what's called a C-arm. It's an x-ray machine that allows me to um, 
uh, see where my needle is placed to make sure in this case that it was right in the SI joint. So I carefully place the needle into the SI joint and then put in some contrast dye. Uh, it's a liquid that has a high density that shows up on x-ray and I could see the flow of the dye, a uh, liquid dye, uh, up and down into the SI joint and I know I'm where I need to be. And then I put in the Novocaine and the uh, catalog, the cortisone. And uh, sure enough, she comes back a week or two later, and her pain is gone or nearly gone. And she can sit, and she's happy, and she's in tears, and I'm getting chicken skin. Because, it, remember, it had been over a year. Can you imagine suffering with this pain and going to doctors and therapists and specialists and getting tests, all directed at the wrong place? And it's not... You don't have to be a genius to do this. It's not like they say rocket surgery here. It's uh, just uh, knowing how to examine the spine and the SI joint and keeping your mind open. It's also not, we learned this in medical school, you don't want to walk down a path of um, that everybody else is walking. Uh, you don't want to follow that path. You want to be able to think for yourself, and not assume that everyone else got it right. So um, here she is after her injection, all happy and fuzzy and um, in a little bit in tears. And uh, I'm thinking, gosh, you know, what a privilege that um, with just a little bit of knowledge and skill and experience, I'm able to uh, help this woman who suffered you know, not terrible pain, but pain for so long at the SI joint, sacroiliac joint. Here comes another call. This is an adventure in how to produce your own show, engineer your own show without knowing what you're doing. Let's see. Hello, it's Dr. Portner. Please be on the air. You yes. Hear? Hello there. Hello. Uh, Hello, Dr. Ha, ha. Portner. Yeah, you're on the air. This is Dr. Portner. How can I help you? Uh, this is Helen. Yes. I was just listening to you about that pain on the celiac. The SI joint, the sacroiliac joint, yeah. Yes. I, what's happening is that when I sit, um, I have pain. Well, actually, I have pain all the time. It's yes. my nerve that's asking. It's um, tingling and numb all the time. Down your leg. Right. Into your foot. Not exactly. Not really I, I into the foot, but down the leg. And is it worse when you sit or worse when you stand or worse when you walk? When when do you feel it the most? Sitting. Sitting. Mm-hmm. I see. And it's only on one side? Yes. And are you sitting now? Yes. What side is it on, the right or left? The left. If you can, shift all your weight over to your right side. So you're sitting on your right butt cheek. Yeah. This well, you know, uh, um, I had two knee replacements, so it's kind of hard to. Well, give I'm it trying a try. to just, just sit on the left. Just yeah. Just shift I, your weight over to the opposite side. Does that make a difference, or is it still the same pain? No, no. It's the pain is not there. And if you shift back to the affected side, does it get? Does it come on? Um. Yeah. The nerves. I see. So here, this could be the first sacroiliac joint examination performed over the radio in the history of humankind, and you were part of that. I, I can't say for sure, my dear. I, I didn't get your name. What's your name? Helen. Helen. I, didn't, uh, I don't know for sure, but that's a simple test. Do you also hurt when you walk? Yes. And, uh, I have low back. And you have low back pain. So... There's no saying for sure that this is a sacroiliac joint problem. However, there's something I can say for sure, that whatever it is that you have that's causing it, whether it's your SI joint or your lumbar spine or your hip or whatever it is, it's diagnosable. You know what I mean by that? It, I can figure, it can be figured out either by me or someone else who is half competent in, in examining people. Are, do you live here in town? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you're welcome to come and see me if you like. And in person, I'll be able to, I should be able to, I don't want to make any promises, but I should be able to diagnose this. And of course, once we have the diagnosis, once we know what's causing this, um, then we can do something about it. The diagnosis that you have a nerve that's causing this is kind of vague. It's not precise enough. Did anyone do a nerve test? An yes. E- an EMG? Yes. Um, no, that's not a problem this way. I mean, they know that I have nerve damage there. But answer my question. Did you have a nerve test called the EMG? Yes, I did. And what were you told from that test? Nothing they can do. No, but what was the diagnosis? Was the test abnormal? No, it showed nerve damage. So it was abnormal. Uh-huh. Right. So if it shows nerve damage, then this is not an SI joint, or at least it's not only an SI joint. The sacroiliac joint doesn't usually damage nerves. It can cause numbness down the leg. And what do you mean there's nothing they can do? Is there anything that they tried? Have you had an epidural injection? Uh, I believe so. It didn't work. And have you had various forms of therapy? Yes. And have you had several different opinions? Yes. And everybody throws up their hands and says nothing they can do. Uh, Yes. Well, Well, I can't... I'm I'm supposed to see the chiropractor. Oh, that's something to try. That's something yeah. worth trying. Don't try it for a long, long time. Yes. Okay? And if all else fails, maybe come and see me. I okay. Can, I can give it a try. Let me take my next caller. Thanks for Thank calling. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Let's see. Hello, it's Dr. Portner. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. I'm the brother. Yeah, hello there. Hey, what? I'm Roy answering calling. my own phone Roy. today. Yeah, I just came... Um, Speak loud, more uh, loudly into your telephone. Okay. I just wanted to see my doctor. Yeah. I had an MRI done, and she recommended I get a, like what you said, I go see a spine surgeon. Uh-huh. She thinks the stenosis. is pretty bad. Yeah, but she still, I'm still due for the epidural. Now they, they're going to send me to Oahu. Oh, good. There's a, but... In the meantime, I need to consult with some consulting. I remember you mentioned Dr. Mitchell-Lager. Yeah. Is that Morris? You got hear you say Morris or Morris Kyle? Morris is the father, and Kyle is the son. Kyle is doing, they work together, but either one, because they all oh. operate together. It's quite a deal. Uh, Morris and Mitsunaga, the, I've known since 1980 or 81. Uh-huh. And he had a son, a little boy, when I first met him. And uh-huh. now the son grew up, went to medical school, did a residency in orthopedic surgery just like his dad, and then did at Stanford a spinal fellowship, extra couple of years. And uh-huh. now is practicing with his son. So that's keeping Morris very happy. You can see either one of them, and they'll uh, talk to you about your surgical options. And Uh in the meantime, I don't know, as long as you're coming to Oahu, tell your doctor you want me to give you your epidural. I'd love to meet you because we've talked over the years. Right, you're right. I remember I mentioned that, but she she, she doesn't want me to see you. I don't know what she Are you a Kaiser patient? No, I'm I'm on uh, HMSA. So you can see whoever you want. You can you can insist if you want. I don't I don't care one way or the other. But I would like to meet you, and that would be oh. a cool way to do it. Just say, listen, I want Doctor Portner. He's done a hundred thousand of these. And I yeah, she, she knows about. But she, you know, she gets on Kauai. She referred patients to Doctor Wang. Yeah, I know Doctor Wang. He's very good, also. So you're in good hands. Doesn't yeah, matter. because but y- it's you know up that the, to you, yeah. not to her. Listen, uh, Roy, I'm going to take another call because no one's answering oh. my phone otherwise. Good luck okay. to you, and if you need to, you come see me. All right? Oh, yeah, you want, I want to meet you. Maybe if I come by, can I come take a look, meet you? Yeah, you could. I suppose. Oh, you so. did? I'd rather you did it as a patient, but that's fine. Let me, <laughs> let me take this next call. Thank okay, you. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Dr. Porter. <laughs> You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Hi, is this Dr. Partner? Yes, it is. I'm 
answering my own phone. No screening, so. Oh, okay. I'm um, not a crazy because you're finishing up pretty soon. I had spoken to you oh, a month or more ago. My name's Don, and um, I had really bad pain in my back and my hip. Yeah. I actually got a referral an appointment to see you. Yes. Um, I wanted to call and apologize because the day I was supposed to come in and see you, my pain just overnight got so bad, I actually had to have an ambulance come and take me out of the house. Oh, my goodness. And so, but this is the deal. I went to Straub. I spent about three weeks in there. And they MRI'd and everything. My right hip joint, they say I need a hip replacement. Right. And I, I saw the scans. Um... It's arthritic, so there's really bad arthritis, and it's like square instead of round. Right. Um, so I'd like to um, maybe get a second opinion. I've got a few different orthopedic surgeons I have, but I still want to see you and see what you think about it. Um, it was a relief to know what's wrong because my right hip has been bothering me for a couple of years. My back is fine now. Yeah, and are you scheduled for surgery? No, I'm not yet. Not yet. And what's your condition? Are you able to walk around? Oh, uh, I'm on a walker. Yeah. I was walking with a cane, and then just bam, overnight, it just went off, and I'm absolutely excruciating pain. And I, like I said, it's really bad arthritis. And my mother had the and hip replacement surgery as well as her father. So. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 53, and I've got several friends who had hip replacement surgery done who are like me, grew up surfing on the North Shore all their lives. And everyone pretty much encourages it. I have one real close friend who had both his hips replaced. One son of 53. Your about your age. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's a little early, but what? how long do they last nowadays? It's not too early, really, because uh, what are you going to do? You can't be in a walker for 10 years waiting. For no. No, I'm, I'm yeah. You're with the doctor, I talked to the orthopedic specialist who just does joint replacement surgeries at Strom. Right. And every doctor said you absolutely need to get your hip replaced. Yes, I think that sounds like a good idea. But, but I'm happy that I found out because I kept telling everybody my right is bothering me right. <laughs> so much. So, um, now I hear stuff about these ads on TV and I hear metal on metal and loose metal fragments. And I hear my friends that get metal going into, uh, Plastic. A ceramic or plastic cup. I'm going to the poly tunnel, so if I lose you, I'm heading to Cairo, that's why. Oh. But what are your feelings on that real quick? You know, I'm not a surgeon. I know. Uh, if I was to have my own hip done, I probably would look into the newer techniques rather than bo uh, metal on metal. No, definitely. I, I grew up, you know, in my career with a hip replacements, metal on metal, and they work really well. Yeah. And they withstood the test of time. The newer ones uh, purportedly avoid certain complications, but uh, they haven't been around as nups, uh, uh, as long. Right. And you never know what might come up. You have to research it, talk to a couple different surgeons. I will. Do your due diligence on the Google. I will. Dr. Calvin Oishi is a surgeon who's operated on me before and then... Um, Dr. Lori Gordon, who started that, was one of the members of the group at, uh, Queens that has Dr. Khan and Richard Sid and Kane, I guess. Those, all those guys are all really good friends of my family, so. Uh -huh. I'll probably go to Dr. Oishi and talk to him and maybe, um, I'll come to you and see what you think when, after I see them and what they say. I'm happy to talk to you, sure. Okay, because I got 34 already and I really appreciate it. I want to get a couple of opinions before I get it done. And if, it, if everybody says do it, I want to schedule it soon so I can enjoy the winter, you know? Right. Okay, but I wanted to apologize again. I've never missed appointments, and I actually was, the morning I was going to see you guys, I had to have an ambulance. I couldn't even walk. I was crawling on my hands and knees. So don't worry about it. Okay. All right. So I will schedule an appointment, and I'll come in and see you sometime okay. in the near future if we can set it up. All right. Very good. You have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Okay. Bye. All right. Aloha. 521-8383. If you're listening from a neighbor island, you can call toll-free 565 8383 That also works from the mainland.
if you're listening on iHeartRadio. And let's see, we have another uh, 20, 25 minutes here, so no worries. Uh, plenty of time for several more callers. Let's hear. Here comes one now. Hello, it's Dr. Portner, and you're on the air. How can I help you? Hello. Good morning. Um, yeah, I have a, a sciatica. I think it stems from a herniated disc. Possible. And um, I'm wondering, uh, what's, what's the success rate of the people coming into your place? Uh, the results. Pretty good. I don't have a number for you. Uh, I would just be making up a number, but uh, the vast majority of people with sciatica, due to all types of problems, uh-huh. such as the disc, uh, do very well with non-surgical treatment. That's what I offer. So right. I, I first diagnose the problem, sciatica, which only means, technically, only means pain in the back of the thigh, yeah. can be caused by a short list of common problems. You mentioned one, a lumbar disc. Right. The sacroiliac joint we were talking about earlier in the show. Uh, I wasn't listening. I, got, I tried to call it the first t- first, uh, first off at the show, but there was, you were having some technical difficulties. Yeah, it was uh, brain difficulties. I had, <laughs> I <didn't, laughs> I'm not that used to running my own show, and there was a button that needed to be pushed. Oh, okay. I'm glad you and corrected that. Yeah, I don't know. The guy didn't show up. I hope he's okay. But Because uh, usually he does. Uh-huh. But um, uh, I, you know, so the, you asked me our success rate. It's pretty good. It's way more than half. And uh-huh. what we do is we first of all try to diagnose the problem because without knowing where the pain, where the sciatic pain is coming from, then it's just a crapshoot. You know, you try this, you try that. You don't need me. Well, I saw two little pops in my my lower lumbar area. And then that's when the pain started. It was in my my uh, running from that area, running run down to my right leg, all the way down to my now it's down to my calf. But I'm taking like I went to the doctor and she prescribed uh, ibuprofen, and now I'm scheduled for therapy. And and if that doesn't work, I'm coming to see you. Uh huh. All right. Very good. Um. Uh. Anyway, I no promises, of course. Anybody gives you any promises, run. Don't walk. Uh-huh. Far away from them. There's no promises in this life. Yeah. Uh, almost. How did the uh, How did the do the cortisone shots work on that? Uh, again, we're talking. Uh, uh, if we're talking about a herniated disc causing sciatica, the epidural injection, if it comes to that, it's not our first treatment because we try other things. But if it comes to that, has a high rate of success. Uh huh. I don't want to give you a number, but way more than half. Well, that's yeah. Good. So that's pretty good, and it's and they're pretty safe. Uh-huh. Very few people actually with uh, disc-related um, sciatica ne- actually need surgery. Good. Uh, a lot of them get surgery, but uh, some of those would have gotten better without. So mm-hmm. uh, you got to be careful there and uh, try to avoid it. Now there are those uh, for whom. Um, Surgery is the way to go, you know. If you have progressive weakness, if you start to lose control of your bowel or bladder or sexual function, if you excuse the expression, then um, then a surgery is a little bit more uh, imminent. But if it's just pain yeah. and, you, and, and uh, it's not getting worse and there's no progressive weakness and the, and the pain is controlled with various means, medications, we have these creams now that are pretty incredible, and um, it uh, then then usually people can get away without a surgery, just with therapy, exercise, sometimes epidural injections. Mm-hmm. The number one thing is to number for you in your case confirm the diagnosis. Yeah. Because some people have a sciatica, have a, a MRI that shows a disc, but the disc is not related. So there are those, not many, but you got to be careful there. Well, I did feel those two little pops right down there in the. Uh, I'm thing. not sure that that. Uh, yeah, but that's when the pain started. So I'm. Right, but yeah. that's obviously what set it off. Yeah. And uh, is sitting a problem for you? When I'm not ibuprofen, I can't sit, and I and it's hard to stand, and and the only way I get relief is when I'm laying down. Hmm. 
If you end up uh, getting an epidural or coming to see me, if you want the epidural soon, you have to get off of that ibuprofen because it thins the blood and makes the shot dangerous. We don't do it. Oh, how long do I have to stay off the ibuprofen? A week. A week? Uh, it's technically five days, but, you know, a week to be safe. Okay. Now, can I ask you a question about doing exercises? Can I go Can I go ahead? If I'm on the ibuprofen, I don't seem to have any problems doing the, the lift, lifting weights and on my legs for doing leg weights. Uh, leg weight, I, if you have a herniated disc and you're um, having bad sciatica, until you get this sorted out, I would shift my exercise routine to the water. Uh-huh, okay. And that way you won't stress your back because if you numb up the pain with ibuprofen and you do weightlifting and you don't feel that it hurts, you may be damaging yourself without knowing it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what so, I kind of thought. So I haven't been doing it. Get it fixed in a hurry, either with therapy or a shot or whatever. Okay. And in the meantime, alter your exercise routine to be more in the water. Okay. All right. Now, I suppose if you don't strain, you could do some uh, gym work, uh, like uh, lying down on a bench uh-huh. and supporting your back. That would be fairly safe. But sometimes, even when we're lying on a bench, if we strain, you know, like straining at the toilet, yeah. if we strain, that'll put pressure on the disc also. So best to stay away from it, get it fixed, rehabilitate it. That's the other thing. Just getting a shot might take away the pain, but then you want to build up the muscles of what's called your core, the muscles that strengthen uh, the middle of your body so that you can support your back. Yeah. So uh, there's definitely hope for you, and uh, take it from there. Okay, well, I've, I've got my x-rays done, and I'm, um, and then I've got a physical therapy schedule, so we'll see what happens after that. And yeah, don't, don't wait too long. You know, physical therapy, um, if it's just exercises, I'm not happy about it. Oh, yeah? If all they do is have you do exercises, that's not the answer. Exercises are more for later when you're feeling better. Now it should be things like traction, manual mobilization where they maneuver the joints of your back, uh-huh. and so on. Okay. Well, thanks, Doc. All right. Good luck to you. All right. Have a nice day. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Uh, let's see. Lines are open. 521-8383, Outer Island and Mainland. Call one triple eight five six five eight three eight three. That's a toll free. Uh, let's see, where was I? So um, uh, I wanted uh, to. T- there's something I don't want to talk about. I'm thinking about it, but I- I'll hold off. I am uh, going to be uh, gone for uh, a couple weeks, almost two weeks, uh, at the end of the month. And uh, I'm going there uh, for a number of reasons to the mainland, to the West Coast, one of which is to visit my son, who uh, goes to school on the West Coast. Um, Very proud of him. He's working for his Ph.D. in marine science. And uh, so there's that. And uh, But I'm also going to be visiting Dr. Irene Melnick. You might uh, have heard of Irene Melnick. And... uh, uh, she was on the air here uh, a year or two ago. She was my fellow. And uh, uh, she has learned a procedure uh, that she is now going to teach me of stem cells. I've been doing PRP, platelet-rich plasma. But um, uh, I am going to California, and she's invited me, and we're gonna, she's going to teach me this new stem cell approach. Not too many, if any, doctors are doing it in the state, so I'll bring it here. But uh, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say here is that it's very gratifying, actually, that a teacher has a student who then moves away, right, to uh, finishes the program and uh, goes and practices on the mainland, her own successful practice, uh, keeps on learning and then ends up teaching me. So the teacher becomes a student, and the student 
now teaches the old teacher me. So hopefully I'll be having, uh, I'll uh, learn to do that procedure and I'll talk to you all about it as soon as I uh, can. I see a call's coming in and maybe the, well, I have somebody here helping me now. How nice is that? All we got to do is uh, put it on the board and I'll uh, take it. Hello, it's Dr. Portner. You're on the air and thanks for calling. Oops. Uh, I guess I lost it. You guys are messing me up here. Keep keep trying. We have a little bit of a, a newbie. I think there must be a newbie here that came late and uh, doesn't know how to do it. Anyway, the frustrations of uh, life. Where was I? Uh, now I've completely discombobulated. So, yeah, I'm... Hello, it's Dr. Fortner. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Hello? Are you there? Uh, never mind, then. Hello? Dr. Doctor. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. You're on the air. Thanks for calling. Okay, quick question. Um, this is not really your field, but um, uh, I figure you might know <laughs> something about this. But I have, I have a friend. And he was doing uh, a carpet with a, I mean, uh, with a sharp razor, and he cut off half his finger. I mean, not not um, not half, but half an inch from the top of the finger. Yeah. And uh, go to the fingernail. Uh, we think that he hit a vein because um, you know he said the the blood was gushing. Yeah. And an uh, artery. If it was gushing, yeah. it was an artery. Yeah, so an artery. So he, he doesn't want to go to the doctor because um, he said he has a two thousand dollar deductible. So, but what um, which, what he's doing is he, he's just wrapping it. Which and I said you gotta go to a doctor because I think they gotta fill it back. But he he's just wrapping it with a bandage, and he said, oh, they, it'll reconnect together. How did it get cut clean off or just cut deeply? Yeah, yeah, just hanging by a thread. And how long ago was this? Yes, yesterday morning. And um, which finger? Uh, index finger, left left hand. You grab him by the collar, throw him in the car, get all the friends together to get him his two thousand dollars, and get that sewed back on. That's gotta be sewed, yeah, because the thing's gonna uh, not heal no properly. For, yeah. Don't take no for an answer. Two thousand bucks is nothing compared to your index finger. Right, right, right. Because if the thing falls off and dries, you're not going to grow skin on that other part, huh? Yeah, I mean, if he didn't do anything, he could just pull off the end, throw it in the toilet, and it'll heal up, but it might get infected. It's silly not to get this fixed. And, uh, Probably. 2000 bucks. maybe you can get uh, 10 friends to throw in 200 bucks. And yeah, he thinks, that he thinks it's too small for them to sew back. <laughs> but he said it's about a half inch. Right. Well, just having it looked at won't cost two grand. Have it looked at. Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you should let him uh, sit on this. you got to have it looked at. And if they look at it and they say, okay, no problem, a couple stitches, it'll be fine, that won't cost mm -hmm. two grand. That'll cost a couple few hundred bucks. Yes. Right. Okay, good deal. You Thanks a lot. That right now before breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the earlier the better, eh? Yeah, right now. Thanks. Bye. All right. Holy smokes. It's it's terrible, you know, even with Obamacare. We say we're insured, but people have different kind of plans, and some people have catastrophic plans where uh, they pay less a premium per month, but they have a large deductible. So it's great if you are really, really sick. There's nothing great about really being really, really sick. But if you're really, really sick, you've got coverage. It's not going to break the bank. You're not going to have to mortgage your house. You're not going to have to be in debt or go live on the street if you make it. But uh, for other more minor things, uh, you have to pay out of pocket, and some people are reluctant to. Here, a guy loses a tip of his index finger, which, okay, you know, uh, it's, it's true you can live without it, but uh, it's possible that it, get, it can get put back on. And even if it can't, the wounds can be cared for and kept clean and sewed up. And um, I don't know. I don't know what people are thinking. 
You know, he might be right if I because I don't see it, but apparently it went through the nail and all the way through to the other side hanging by a thread. I doubt very much if it's viable by itself. But if they get some hand surgeon, they can perhaps put it on. I don't know. I really don't know. It's a little bit upsetting to me. I don't know how you guys feel about it. But somebody uh, cuts off his index finger and doesn't want to get it fixed because of the two grand that he's afraid he's going to have to pay. Two grand is a lot of money for some people. You know, if you're working uh, 10, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, you figure, how many hours do I got to work? <clears throat> to cover that and say, geez, I'll just soon live without the tip of my index finger. I guess that's an individual choice. On the other hand, um, um, it could get infected and you could lose your whole hand or worse. So there's also that. So uh, I don't know. Here, I got another caller. Let's see what, what surprises we have here. Hello, it's Dr. Portner. You're on the air, and thanks for calling. Yes, hi, Dr. Portner. This is uh, Jane in Cunningly. I, I had a comment about uh, the last caller. Uh, I used to work at Castle, and I know Dr. Wiley Brunel is really good with hands. Yeah, Brunel. Hey, just, I, I hope he's still listening. So he's, he's <laughs> over on the windward side, huh? Yes, he is. I know I know he does really good work with uh, with you know, hand surgeries and stuff like that. Yeah, so very just, a, just a suggestion and long time listener. Thank you very much. Okay, Jane. Thank you. Thanks for calling and thanks for listening to the show. I hope you heard that. What was the doctor's name again? Brun I I missed the exact name. I wasn't familiar with him. Anyway, uh five two one eighty three eighty three is the number here. Uh if you're listening from um a neighbor island, you can call uh, toll free one triple eight one eight 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 five six five eight three eight three. Actually, we only have another five or ten minutes here, uh, but there's certainly time for one more caller at least. So we'll see about that. Let's see if I can do something here. There we go. Um, so I was telling you about my trip down to, to uh, the Bay Area, visit my son, visit Dr. Melnick, who's going to teach me, her her teacher, she's going to teach me about how to harvest stem cells from uh, fat. There is something, uh, and then uh, use that in the treatment of uh, severe, severe and chronic tendonitis that doesn't get better with normal techniques. Uh, ligamentous strains that don't seem to get better, and in some cases, joints um, that maybe we can help arthritic joints. I, I have my healthy skepticism about that, but we'll see. We'll see if that's any good. Um, and um, I had something else I was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> I forgot. I'm getting old. Um what was that? Uh, anyway, um, so Dr. Irene Melnick, and I'll be there. And Oh, and she has me uh, meeting another colleague with an altogether brand new complaint, uh, uh, a brand new uh, technique that I know little about, but I'll share it with you all uh, as soon as I know more. So... Uh, Let's see, I think I have another caller coming in right about now. Uh, Dr. Wiley Brunel. Uh, thanks, Dave. D Dr. Bro just uh, texted me. Wiley Brunel is the hand surgeon. So if the guy who called me about his buddy who cut off his finger, Wiley Brunel on the windward side is there. Let's see, I'll take this next caller. Hello, it's Dr. Portner, and you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Oh, hi. I came two years ago and you helped my neck. Thank you. Um, I'm calling now. I fell a year ago and um, they didn't do an x-ray. They sent me the physical therapy, which was um, nice, but it ended up that I had a, a, rot a rotary cuff tear. And it was it was a big one. And so anyway, I went in, you know, and 
saw a, a surgeon and he said, oh, yeah, I can fix it, I can fix it. So I was ready for surgery and it got hugely swollen. So I had to put it off. And then in the meantime, I went for another opinion and took the MRI, which, oh, I forgot to say, I did end up getting MRI. And he said, I don't know who told you they could fix it, but it's irreparable. Of course, I was just really depressed because I'm uh, I'm older, but I like to swim and I like to do yoga, and I can't do any, any of those now. Um, I, you know, I kind of didn't know who to believe. I called back to the nurse, and she said, oh, yeah, we do a smoothie. And I said, well, he said he could fix it. Well, I don't exactly know what a smoothie is, but I wanted to be able to use it. Well, that's the way it is now. But uh, I heard not too long ago from a, a physical therapist in the neighborhood that there's a doctor in town who does a reverse, um, a reverse, um, Rotary cuff surgery. Have you heard of this? No, I don't know that term, Joan. Yeah. But, um, this this started how long ago? A year ago? Yeah, it was a year ago. How did you hurt yourself again? Oh, uh, there was a contractor building a house, and the cement left a little mound of cement, and I just yeah. just tripped over it. And uh -huh. do you have an attorney? Well, I didn't do that. And at the time, I didn't know it could be fixed. But I did ask the um, the contractor owner, a big, big builder in town, right, if I could just have some money for physical therapy to help me. I'm a widow and on a limited thing. Anyway, um, never heard from him. And um, it's... I won't go into that. Okay. It looks like I'm not going to get anything. Yeah, because I only have a minute left. Yeah, I know. I just wondered if there was... In one minute, let me talk to you. Okay, you talk to me. First of all, uh, as far as the law goes, you have two years. So uh -huh. you go find an attorney on Monday. Okay. And um, uh, there's plenty of very good attorneys that do this and get some help. Number two is... Um, don't despair just yet. Get your MRI. Get another opinion. I helped your neck. Maybe come see me. Let me at least have a look at this. And uh, I can uh, d direct you from there. But um, I wouldn't give up, and I certainly would talk to an attorney. You have two years from the incident. Oh, really? They told me I have one year. It's two. Okay. Yeah, well, I... Okay, okay. I have a I'm quickie. Gonna, I'm going to have to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, I'm going to come and see you because right. I have okay. about five Let's questions. Go. I'll have to be later. Thank you so much. Okay, that's about it, everybody. Call my office and ask about Relax Path. It's a very good deal we're offering for very inexpensive massage. Meanwhile, go have some fun, work out, and then get a massage. We'll see you later. Thank you for listening to The Moving Body. hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, if you're uh, having problems with your arms, leg, neck, or back and would like to get an appointment over at the office on P.E. Coy Street, you can give us a call, 596-7300. We're open six days a week and have a full line of doctors, therapists, uh, EMG, and a great office staff to assist you. We try to respect your time like uh, we hope you respect ours so people are seen on time. You don't have to... Expect to spend the whole uh, morning if you have a 9 o'clock appointment. We'll try to see you right then and there. Remember the warning signals that I talk about throughout the show off and on. If uh, someone tells you that it's only your age to live with it, that the x-ray is normal, nothing's wrong, that it's, quote, arthritis or bursitis or tendonitis, but they haven't really examined you very carefully, uh, be cautious about that. Ask for another opinion. If you're told to have surgery, Ask for another opinion. If you're told nothing else can be done about it, you want to say, well, maybe you can refer me to another specialist. Maybe they have a better idea. Don't just accept those kind of things. Don't forget to tune in uh, next week, uh, same time, on uh, KHVH. Go out there and exercise this weekend. It's the single most important thing you can do for your uh, health and body. Health cannot be bought off the shelf. A special nutritional supplements is not what it's going to take to improve your health. It's going to take a lifestyle change. It's going to take for you to put on some good walking shoes. 